Hey guys, welcome to my video. I'm super excited to go over the material from this chapter. Today I'll be covering the regions of the body along with their English and Latin names. Now, learning the Latin in addition to the English will come super useful in later chapters when we're learning different terms in Latin because they're all kind of interrelated. Now, in all of us, we have several regions found all over our body. And to organize them properly, we categorize them from major regions into smaller subregions. There are five major regions in the body, which consist of the head, the neck, the trunk, which is by far the largest when it comes to mass, the superior limbs, and lastly, the inferior limbs. And those are the five major regions. But within them, there are several smaller regions that we need to, need to learn. So to start us off, let's go ahead and begin with the head. Now, like I mentioned earlier, we need to learn the Latin names for all the regions. So head in Latin is caput. And the caput can be broken down into two different regions, okay? The first one is going to be the cranium. The cranium is what some people call the brain case because it surrounds the brain. It goes around the ears, up to the top of the head. It's everything around kind of the skull cap, okay? Now, the cranium can also be broken down into even smaller regions such as the fronds, which is forehead in Latin. We have on the sides right here, tempus, which is Latin for temples, like your temples on the side of your head. You also have the vertex. Now the vertex is the very, very type, tippy tippy top of your head, vertex. And the English translation for vertex is crown, the crown of your head. You also have your aris, which are your ears. And you have one last region that you can't see in this image, so we're going to quickly switch images. And it's this region right back here. This is going to be called the occiput, and that's both English and Latin. Now this image also kind of shows you how large the cranium really is. It is all of this back here. Remember the vertex is the very tippy top. You have your aris right here, part of your fronds. You have your tempus. And those are all of the subregions within the cranium. But we have to go back because there's one extra um, region that divides the caput into two separate categories. So I already mentioned the cranium. And the second region is called facies. Now this word sounds awfully, awfully a lot like face, and it is. It's all this region right here. This is the facies. The facies has two regions right here called oculus which means eyes you have nasus which means nose you have your mouth which is os in latin in addition to all these you also have your cheeks which is Bucca, B-U-C-C-A, Bucca. And lastly, we can't forget your chinny chin chin, which is mentum. Those are all of the regions, or the, I should say the subregions within the facies. Remember the caput's broken into the cranium and then the facies. The cranium has its own subdivisions, the fronds, the tempus, the aris, the, the, um, the occiput, the vertex. And then the facies has its own, the oculus, nasus, 
Buca Mentum Os. So that's it. Those are all of the regions found within the head. So now we can go over to the next major region, which was the neck. So I'm going to use this image because it's much easier to visualize using this image for the neck. So the neck in Latin, well, first off, I should identify where the neck is. So neck is all this region right here. Now neck in Latin is colum, C-O-L-L-U-M, colum. Sorry, I'm going to make my marker a little thinner. Now the colon is separated into two different regions, which is fairly easy to remember. You have the cervix, and then back here you have nuca. Nuca in English is nape. So the nape of the neck is the nuca. Cervix is the anterior portion of the colon. Now, there are two different ways you can say this in English. You can say, for, for example, the nuca, like I said earlier, is nape, which is acceptable in English. Or you can just plainly say posterior aspect of neck. Similarly, the cervix in English is anterior aspect of neck. And that's it. That's, that's all that is required of you to learn when it comes to the subregions of the colon. There are several other regions found in the neck, but we don't need to go into that much detail. So we've gotten two of the five major regions done, along with all the subregions. And now we can just move on to the trunk. Let's see if it'll let me. There we go. So I really like this image because it has a lot of detail. So let's go ahead and just start. So the trunk, once again, is just inferior to the neck, not part of the superior limb. And it goes all the way down and includes the pelvis all the way down here okay there we go sorry my marker wasn't working now the trunk is broken down into four regions so let's start with the most obvious ones which are right here right in front this big block right here so this right here is called thorax or you can say pectus and these are both the Latin terms now thorax in English is simply just the same thing thorax and pectus in English is chest now just inferior to the thorax we have the abdomen right the six-pack so we have abdomen, which is the same word in English. Good. And just inferior to the abdomen, we have the pelvis. Pelvis. Same thing in English. Pelvis. Which makes it easy for us. Now, I don't have an image of this, but you guys can just visualize it. Behind this anterior portion, so right here we kind of have this wall, this anterior wall. So in the back, behind us, right here in the back, we have another region. So back in Latin is dorsum. Oops, I already misspelled that. Dorsum. So everything in the back um, that consists of the trunk is called dorsum. And those are all of the subregions found in the trunk, which is really easy. Remember, we have the thorax or pectus, we have abdomen, we have pelvis, and lastly, we have dorsum. Those are the four subregions of the trunk. Oh, and I almost forgot. 
Trunk in Latin is truncus. Super easy to remember. Trunk is truncus. All right, we can go ahead and move on to the next major region. The superior limb, like everything else, has a Latin name. And the Latin name for superior limb is membrum superioris. Membrum superioris. And that is all of this right here. Now, starting at the most proximal region, which is closest to the shoulder joint, all this right here is the shoulder. But in English, we're going to call it regio deltoideus. Regio deltoideus. Regio deltoideus. Not too bad. You can also say in English, a deltoid region, which is the direct translation for regio deltoideus. Just a little further past regio deltoideus, distally, we have the brachium. Brachium in English is arm. Now, if we were just walking around talking to our friends about our, our arm for whatever reason, we usually think of this whole thing as our arm. But that is mistaken. The brachium right here, that is our arm. This whole organ right here, that's membrum superioris or the superior limb. So don't be confused by that. Right here, our elbow, that is called cubitus. Which is just a little further past the brachium. Following that, we have right here, our antebrachium. Now, if we were going up towards regio deltoideus, we can remember that anti, like anti right here, means before. So this is the region before the brachium, which is technically not true because we have the cubitus right here, but that's what helps me to remember antebrachium between, yeah, between antebrachium and brachium. Okay, good. And lastly, we have the hand. I'm going to switch images for the hand so we have a better view. So right here we have some dude's hands. And the hands, so right here is kind of division between antebrachium and the next region. The next region is called your carpus. Now carpus in Latin means wrist. I mean, in English means wrist. Okay, so carpus means wrist. Just a little further, in this region right here, we have our metacarpus. Metacarpus. And you'll learn later in upcoming chapters they have metacarpal bones in this region, and that's why it's called metacarpus. Okay? metacarpus. Now, this is where a lot of students have a hard time understanding, so I'm just going to take a little bit more time on this. Right here you have your digits. Digits of the hand. Digits of the hand in Latin is digiti manus. Manus in Latin, I mean manus in English, is hand equals hand. Okay, so we have the digits of the hand, and they're numbered first with the first digit, which is the thumb. So we have one, two, three, four, and the fifth digit. Okay, now, like I said earlier, we have to learn the Latin names. So I'm just going to write them off right here, kind of in plain sight. So I'm going to renumber them. I don't know why I erased that. Three, four, five. So right here. The first digit. The first digit, or the thumb, is called in Latin digitus primus or pollux. Pollux just means thumb in Latin. Second digit is digitus secundus or 
simply index. Latin, I mean in English that's index finger. You're kind of catching a pattern here, digitus tertius. Or you can say digitus medius. Fourth digit, digitus quartus. Or you can say digitus annularis, which means ring finger in English. I ran out of space, so I'm going to move over here. The fifth digit is digitus quintus, or you can say digitus minimus, which means little finger. So here's all the Latin, and you guys know the English translations for them. You have first digit in English, second digit, third digit, fourth digit, fifth digit. Or you can say, which is pollux, index, digitus medius, digitus annularis, digitus minimus. In English, you have thumb, index finger, middle finger, ring finger, and little finger. And that's it. Those are all the subregions in the superior limb, or membrum superioris. Now, finally, we can move on to the last major region of the body. So right here, we have, like before, all, oops, goes down even further. All of this is membrum inferioris or inferior limb. It starts with your coxa, which is hip, followed by, oops, that doesn't look right, followed by your femur. Not to be confused with your femur bone. Femur literally means thigh in English. You have your knee, which is genu in Latin, followed by this region right here. And this is your crust, which is leg. Now, the posterior aspect of your crust, which we call the calf, is your sura. Sura equals calf. Perfect. Now the last thing we have is the pes. So here's the plantar view of the pes. And you guys probably already know, or you can guess, pes in, Latin, in English is foot. Now similarly, uh, we have a tarsal region, kind of like we had a carpal region with the hand. So all this right here, and on the superior aspect as well, this would be considered our tarsus. Which just means ankle. Just distal to the tarsus, we have our metatarsus. And same over here. Now, just like the fingers or the digits of the hand, they're numbered. Starting with the big toe, one, two, three, four, and five. So first, second, third, fourth, and fifth digits. And they all have the exact same name when it comes to digits. So digitus primus, digitus secundus, digitus tertius, digitus quartus, digitus quintus. All those names are the same. Now with the fingers, these digits had specialized names like index, digitus medius, digitus annularis. But when it comes to the digits of the foot, they don't have specialized names. The only names they have in Latin is digitus secundus, digitus tertius, digitus quartus. Okay? However, the first and the last digit of the foot, they do have specialized names. So just like before, 
the first digit has digitus primus. But in order to say big toe in Latin, all you have is hollux. Hollux means big toe. And then fifth digit, uh, quintus in Latin, little toe is the same. Digitus minimus. So same as the little finger. Just means little digit. So remember, these don't have specialized names. They're only named by second, third, and fourth digit. So digitus secundus, digitus tertius, or quartus. But the big toe and the little toe have their own specialized names. In addition to digitus prim primus and digitus quintus. It's hollux and digitus minimus. And that's it. That is literally all the different regions of the body, including the subregions. Pretty impressive. Awesome. Well, hopefully I'll see you guys next time. Take care.